one. Do I count you all now? Hey, we are here. Hey, everybody. Watchers in the basement. Let's That's start right. over. Let's, Let's start. try that. Let's start. Okay. Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the open. We're going to sing the intro here for you, all of you live here. Ready? Uh, except for some reason. There we go. Brittany is actually here. The song's not before. The song's after the introductions, right? Yeah, that well, makes fine. Sense Do it, man. Fire it <laughs> off. Who are you? I just see Justin Boyd. Hello. I'm George Luna. Hello. <laughs> I'm Brittany Pacheco. I'm Francisco Cupa. And I'm Nathan Hale. And you're watching. We are. You're not watching. Anything. We are. Oh, and we are. In the basement. And we're freaking back. That was the best intro we've ever done. I think it was. That was that was pretty spot on. You know the best part of this is I don't have my camera set up, so I'm gonna literally set my camera up while we're doing this live. So go for it. Okay. Good job, Nathan. So was that really our intro? Yeah, yes. we're we're live, yeah, man. This, live. this is happening. Good. Okay. Um, well. Welcome back to the Watchers in the Basement. We are coming to you from our homes right now because of uh, this little thing called COVID-19. So it's been a while since we've done a show and we were thinking we need to come back and do something. And we decided to do The Office. Now, why The Office, you might ask? And I say that's a good question. I don't know. I don't think we have an answer. <laughs> Except for maybe why not The Office, right? Because everybody loves The Office. So, um, I, um, I watched The Office from the beginning. I was actually watching on NBC, like when it was on. Same. George did too. Okay, awesome. Same. So, I think everyone else watched it when it was on Netflix. Um, those sirens are on my end, by the way, if you're, if you're watching. Um, they're coming to get me. No, um. But The Office, yeah, so it's, it was a huge hit on streaming. I know, like, uh, Brittany, for example, you got into the show just a couple years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so about three years ago in December, um, I had surgery and had nothing better to do than just watch TV, and y'all kept talking to me about The Office. So, okay, found it on Netflix and binge watch all episodes in, like, two weeks. Wow. That's dedication right there. It is. So, so George, you said you were watching it live also. So did you start with season one? Yeah, I started season one. So I was back then when I was watching a Community and all those shows I'd watch on Thursday nights. Oh, yeah. And I just, I, it was funny, it, especially the seasons where Michael or, or is in the seasons. Uh, those are my favorite ones. And I know we're going to talk about that, like how it the show changed after he left and everything like that. I just think it's so crazy how, like, the show is popular on TV, but it's way more popular now. And it's been yeah. off the list since, like, 2013, I think, or 2012. Or I, feel, I feel like that happens on, to a lot of shows that, like, end up, like, they weren't that popular before. Like, another example of that is Parks and Rec. That show got canceled, like, three times. And, yep. and Community, that show got canceled a whole bunch of times. And now there's, like, a resurgence of all these shows that people didn't really watch when it was on TV, but now they're like classics that people love. What say you, Frank? I started watching it, I was watching on accident. I was looking for, I was looking for uh, another show on Netflix, uh, I can't remember what show it was, and then I'm, I saw it on there and I was like, oh, okay, check this out. And I, I started watching it from like season one and then like, when Mike, when, whenever Michael left, I can't remember what season it was. I tried was watching episodes here and there. Was that six? I tried watching it here and there, and like I just couldn't get into it, so I just stopped watching it after Michael left. And then Thanksgiving last year, I was out of town, and I was uh, and like um they showed like the last, I guess last few episodes of the whole series. And so when Michael came back, I was like, oh, Michael's back, but he was only like in like episode for, like ten minutes. Apparently, mm -hmm. like Dwight and like Dwight and like um. Doing like buddies and stuff now. It, it was very confusing. I thought it was like, yeah, a, that was the last episode. 
Yeah, I thought it was, I was like it was like an alternate reality for me because like that's that's what I remember they were mortal enemies. So yeah, yeah, I, I love I love the series though. It was, it was really, really great. Did, the hey, hey, didn't we all go to a uh, office trivia party like a, a, at a bar night? Did we do? Yeah, that? I, was, I was no help. I was useless in that. Um, I, I I was pretty much decoration that that night. I so remember fun. that. I remember that uh, yeah. Justin Justin and I went with you, Frank. Um, to local bar here in Houston, King's Beer House in the Heights. And there were so many people there um, to compete in this trivia night that we had to sit outside. And this is like early January. And it so was- So that was another time. Okay. There's a time this that I went with y'all. Yeah, we- I remember I went with y'all. So we went to two. Yeah. Or y'all went to two. Yeah, we've done Game of Thrones ones also. It's hard to remember how many. We've done several. I mean, like, I'd probably say I've done, like, seven or eight of them, like, with Game of Thrones and Office. And there's probably something else. So, there's a Mar- I did. A, we did a couple Marvel ones one time, or a couple times. So. The yeah. problem with The Office is that because there's so many episodes, it's so hard to remember, like, certain certain things or certain characters or... Yeah. They're so hard. They're like, what color was the stapler on the desk of someone in this episode? I'm like, no, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I barely yeah. remember everybody's names, let alone what episodes, what happened in what episode. Yeah, that's that's fair. But to, to go back to something Frank has said um, about when Michael Scott left and then Will Ferrell's character came in. I couldn't get into it either. I mean, I powered through because I liked The Office because y'all kept saying it was really good. Um, but for whatever reason, I didn't, I didn't like the character D'Angelo. No, he wasn't funny. No. He was more annoying than anything. And not even in a funny way. He was just like, this doesn't work. I like James Spader's character, though. Robert I thought he was, yeah. he was funny. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Yeah, same here. I try. I try to watch. I try to watch those episodes. I just. I think Michael. Michael have have put an imprint on like his value to the show for those six seasons. That it was just I couldn't envision anybody else being the boss of that company. Even like even when he temporarily left to start his own paper company, it was just weird seeing somebody else in that office chair that was not Michael Michael Scott. It was just I don't know. I feel you, Frank. Well, I feel you. Then a big shocker for you, Frank, was that Andy became the regional manager at Scranton at one point. And then towards the end of the very last episode, Dwight was the one who was finally regional manager. I heard. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I, I remember I heard that Andy was my sister watched it. She, she left Andy uh, as boss. Um, I didn't, I didn't watch any of those episodes. I don't really particularly like Andy. I think he's kind of, funny. I don't either. Yeah. He has a character. I think he just fills with space. So I'm, I wouldn't, I know for a fact, I wouldn't like those episodes. Yeah, I mean, the thing about th- that time period of The Office, um, there was nobody that really could fill Michael's shoes, especially someone from the outside. But I think they finally figured out at the end that, like, the best way to fill his spot was just within. Like, use, like there's so many characters in the show. Just give those characters more time. Yep. You know, like, it, it didn't make sense to bring in somebody on the outside and then put them in this world with this cast who's been together for seven or eight years and then try to, like, have that, that person be... So star, you're, you're uh, saying they should hire from within? Yeah, it's a, <laughs> well, some people do that. You know, I, you were you beat me to it, but I was like, I was on the winding road to that point. But yeah, you're, I, you're right. I just it's, had to cut you off on the road there. Yeah, that that's a weird concept, really. Like, I don't do companies do that? Do like organizations? Or no, companies? remember the show's fictional. Oh, that's right. <laughs> 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 that explains it. That explains it. Only in Hollywood. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so to go off that, what? Um, let's go around the room. Who are your favorite characters in the show? Or favorite like favorite storylines, or just like funny things you remember from the show? I'll start with Brittany. We'll just go down the line and talk about favorite stuff. I think one of my favorite episodes had to deal with the Sweeney Todd play that Andy was in. Um, If y'all know me, which I'm sure, you know, you guys know me, but people who are musicals, 
<laughs> uh, I love musicals. Yeah, I absolutely love musicals. I've seen Sweeney Todd, and I thought that was a really fun um, storyline because Michael Scott was all pissed off that you know he didn't get the title role, and you know he's gonna go support Andy and what have you, and all these other shenanigans happen. Um, I thought it was really cute, but I absolutely love um, Jim and Pam's wedding. I think that's definitely one of the best episodes in, in the whole thing. And alongside when Jim confesses his love to Pam um, at Casino Night. George, what were some of your favorite characters and moments from the show? So Michael's different, definitely like probably number one, just he's the funniest person on that show. Uh, Jim and Dwight's back and forth with just like the pranks they pull on each other. That's definitely on my top as well. I love, I love, I love those guys. But the low key, like the the character, like underrated character, I think is Creed. That dude, he, he's just so funny to me. He's he's ridiculous. Like all the stuff that he does is just hilarious. And he ended up being like an outlaw in at the end, and he got arrested. I, I don't know. It, I like I like the ending of the show and how it ended, and all the characters, like like you were saying, Jay, like they all their storyline started to wrap up and once Michael left, like they focus on the characters. And I think that's what made the show good till it ended. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, so Frank, what about you? Who are your favorite characters or favorite moments? Or... This is my favorite character was Jim. Um, I love how sarcastic he, he is or was and, and like his facial expressions, like anything, anytime anything happened, like in a meeting or like out in the town, he would just, <laughs> You know, quick pan to the camera and like a quick look, or it was just like he had no problems. Like his sarca- his sarcasm skills were on point. He reminds me of you, Justin. To be honest, like that's it, exactly it, what I was gonna say. Off the cuff, man. Just like the level of sarcasm was just great. And then um, some of my favorite episodes. I remember it, it had been early on in the series where um, the, the the office guys were playing basketball against the warehouse guys. Yeah. And Michael picked Stanley because he thought he pooped. He was black. He, st- he starts dribbling. <laughs> he couldn't hoop at all. Yeah, Brittany's doing it perfectly. <laughs> He's over here, you know, just dribble. Yeah. And, and Michael's like, what? Yeah. Well, Are you kidding me? That's yeah. also that's also one of my favorite episodes, too. Dude, that was I heard so- that's how Frank plays. That, is that how you play basketball, Frank? Not, I, I'm not far <laughs> off. Uh, I, I'm a football player, man. I don't, I, I'm not a hooper. <laughs> I'm 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 like a Dennis Rodman guy. Like I'll go get rebounds and I'll I'll run the floor, but yeah, I'm not a very good hooper. And then like the Calgary Friday episode, man, with Meredith, man, when she had like, that two dress on and she was just she she put oh. It up. oh no, you show him there she put it down. It was just yeah. Yeah, it was it those are my probably my two favorite episodes of the series. What about you, Nathan? Yeah. Well, it's funny you should call me out because I've got to adjust my video now. Because uh, this was never done beforehand. I had to create a new video source. And I don't know what's going on with it. Because it's also messing with the quality. So something weirds going on here. But regardless of that. Um, since I'm here. Uh, honestly. I I never finished the show. I got through I think. The, the la- I have about three or four episodes left. In, uh, in the final season. Um, loved the show. But yeah. I, I really. Once uh, Steve Carell left it 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 definitely lost a lot for me um however looking back my two favorite things were always the open just just that opening scene when they it would typically be a Cold prank open. of some sort Cold open. Uh, those i absolutely loved and uh and for some reason i think the episode that most sticks out to me because dwight was the most lovable hateable character on the show and the the episode when he got in the accident or something and he had like amnesia or something was going on in his head and he like was really nice and Pam was like, yeah. wow, what's going on? And then like he gets fixed or whatever and suddenly he's back to old Dwight and there's just this kind of like, damn, I feel like I just kind of lost a friend. Uh, and I, I just remember that one a lot. That episode really kind of hit pretty pretty strong there. Mainly because I'm a jerk, I think. And then I'm like, maybe if I hit my head, I could be a nice guy. For a change, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> Nathan, you're a sweetheart. 
Maybe. Oh, Next time, was... I got to test my camera before we actually go live. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors, Nathan. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Our audience is happy to see us. Yeah. That, if they can see us or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know because I'm just... One person. Right? Oh, wow. Is it you, Brittany? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Brittany watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Our one viewer. <laughs> if that one viewer would like would like us and maybe, you know. Have you comment on your favorite part of the show? I really like that Brittany person. <laughs> Listen, on the other show on the other show that I co host that we're not gonna name here, I actually do have fans. Thank you very much. I'm witty and hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, the whole Dwight thing, like, I, I think that's a good way of putting it, Nathan. He's a lovable but hateable type character. Um, he's he's so smart that he's dumb, you know? Yeah. Mm. Very socially awkward. Like, I think he lacks people skills. That's why I was so surprised that he, was, he became boss in the series. I'm like... The guy who lacks the most people in social skills is a boss. That's amazing to me. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Get wow. Hollywood. God, how crazy. Uh, crazy. So, so let's talk about Dwight because obviously Dwight is. Dwight Schrute. Dwight Kurt Schrute. Hmm, funny, we know someone named Kurt. Anyway, um. The episode where he and Mike Michael go to some conference and Dwight has to deliver this speech. And, and Jim tells him, oh, all these tips, you know, I took public speaking when I was in college, you know, they really respond if you, you know, slam your fists on the podium and, and shout. And so you, he has like this Mussolini type, type speech that he gives uh, to these reps and he's got a following. And I think it's that same episode where he said, there's too many people, we need a new plague. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. I remember that, 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 that scene too. I just always loved the, the rivalry between Jim and uh, Dwight. Like the, you know, the cop, they're obviously they're both salesmen. They're competing for customers or whatever. Um, and they're just, you know, always back and forth with each other. Um, it was always one of the highlights for me. And um, I always, I love the theme song. I love the music. Like I love like how the cold open would always go into that song. And like, it was yeah. always, it was always funny. And that song just kind of makes you feel good because it's kind of like this upbeat, like kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know. I always liked it. And then the fact that they, that they turned Scranton, Pennsylvania, like into a character, you know, like it's just like this place that, most of us have probably never heard of, but it's a real place and it becomes like this. You know, Speaking of, because obviously this is what's going to happen during our show, uh, talking about turning Scranton into a character, but there was one character that we never really determined if he was real or not is the Scranton Strangler. Do y'all think that that person was maybe Toby or someone else? I think I sent y'all that video that when I told you it was Toby and I, I think it is. It it all makes sense. Wait, wasn't didn't Toby leave a little bit when 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 the search for the yeah he went to he went to Costa Rica yeah I think it was Toby and then too. he ended up coming back. Well, why did he, why did Michael hate Toby so much? Because he was I HR. Know. Yeah, I think just HR people. But he didn't hate um, Angela. Was it Angela HR? Accounting. Yeah, at first he at first he did though. And then he started getting to know her, and it's like, oh, okay, she's different. Oh. Uh, but Angela was in accounting. She's just a not Angela, dude. Uh, uh, Holly, the, the one, yeah, Holly. There you go. Yeah, Holly. Okay. I think it was part of it was because like HR was kind of the ones who would step in, and they were kind of the fun police for Michael because Michael, like, he was this oblivious boss who didn't understand like social cues or what was okay to do in the office place, and oftentimes. Toby or the HR person will be the one to say, you can't do that. And he always like, that's why he always treated him so poorly, I guess. I don't know. Was, yep. No, I think that's right, Jay. It was always a, a funny like, Toby's part like show. weird obsession with um with Pam was kinda odd to me too. It was kinda it was very creepy. 
Toby's the session. Yeah. Yeah, well, Pam, yeah, that was super creepy. And then yeah. Ryan, Ryan at one point was kind of into Pam when he became VP. Was, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of office, a lot of office crushes and romances. Now that I think about it, definitely, definitely. I think uh, the on and off between Ryan and Kelly, you know, was just ridiculous. They're perfect for each other, though. Or, They're both crazy. Who was, I guess, in your opinion, who who was your favorite Michael love interest in the show? Ooh. I'm gonna say Jan Levinson Ghoul. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah. Dude, the dinner party episode with Jan and, and when they invited the that, everybody. with a small TV, bro. With oh a small my TV. gosh. Yeah. That's one of the greatest scenes of all time. That's just so funny. Dude. <laughs> he pulls it out, he's like, I just got this. <laughs> Just for my uh, reason, I, I really wanted Michael to marry Jan. So I, I want I want her on the show full time. That would have been funny. I think when he dated uh, Pam's mom was also. I think that was pretty funny. That was a hilarious relationship too. That was a good one too. It did not last long, but it was it was quite good. Yeah, I can't I can't believe he was hitting it. That's that's amazing. <laughs> the good thing. Yeah, that was that was weird. I, I like how they incorporated his real wife, Steve Carell's real wife, into the show as his realtor. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, his wait, that's his real wife. It's real yeah. wife. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. The blonde realtor lady. Yep. Was that I the did not one? Know that. Was that the one? The episode when Michael thought he had herpes, he was calling everybody. Was it? yeah, it's her. But she was in like the first season, Frank. She you know, like the her. first second where he was trying to buy a condo. Yeah. So yes. I, it was her. Yeah. And then he he wanted to propose during Diwali when mm -hmm. everyone from the office went to Kelly's uh, wherever they were doing holding Diwali and he, he gets on the mic and he proposes to to uh can't even think of her name in the show, but yeah, that's his real life in real life. Wow. wow. Oh, that's amazing. And yeah. for that's Diwali amazing. He told her to dress up, and she dresses a cheerleader. <laughs> that's right. So funny. So, what is everyone's favorite cold open? If you can remember um, any one of them, and yeah. I, can, I can I can give you mine right now. The the parkour one is oh, probably the mine. funniest one. Yeah. No, uh, my my favorite cold open is the one where uh, Jim dresses up as Dwight. And then he shows up together, and that, that cold open is hilarious. Or Asian Jim, when there was an Asian version of Jim, that, that one was so funny to them. Yeah. My favorite cold open is when Dwight is at either Home Depot, or one of these, one of these like home goods stores, and he's like outside, and like he's like trying to recruit help to like move something, but he's really uh, like, that was trying to support. <laughs> <laughs> and like this, and like he's trying to deport all the Hispanics, but like this white guy shows up for help. I mean, to, to, to look for a job, and he's like, "Yeah, you go with me." But everybody else, you know, they're not going. Like he tries to. Get, it, that, that was that was risque, man. As far as like, as far as like, as far as like, you know, social issues. But yeah, that was pretty funny. Oh, we've got uh we've got Mark on uh, on our page, and he's watching us our live stream. Thank you, Mark. He says, uh, when Kevin spills the chili. <laughs> ah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin had a lot of funny moments. I think my my favorite uh, Kevin thing is the fact that he had that band, Scrantonicity. <laughs> yeah, his own band. <laughs> they gonna play, yeah, they were going to play Pam's Wedding or whatever. And he, he's like, you know, he's talking to Jim about it. And he's like, we really need this. Uh, or talking to, to Roy about it. Yeah. We really need this opportunity. <laughs> But I don't know, it's they, so silly. They only sing like the police type songs, yeah. Roxanne. Yeah, they're they're a cover a they're cover, cover band, band, right? Yeah, exactly. Because I think there's a police song called Synchronicity. That's why they're called Scrantonicity. Yeah. 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 So did it, I don't know if y'all ever saw this commercial, but he was on a, a Bush Beans commercial for his famous chili. Oh wow. Did y'all ever see that? It, oh, but, yeah. That's he, funny. He ended up being on a commercial for that. So now he's like a spokesperson for Bush's Chili or something like that. 
Yeah, totally. I miss that. Yeah. So we've seen in the new in you know social media lately that uh, Leslie, uh, his name Leslie David, uh, who played Stanley on the show, he is looking to do a spinoff. Uh, what do y'all think about that? Is Stanley the main character? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, well, an I don't know. That's the storyline. They like. I read something about it. Yeah. So the storyline is that he's going to Los Angeles to help his nephew uh, open a some kind of shop. I forgot what it was, a tech shop or some, uh, something like that. But they, he 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 moves to Los Angeles after retirement, like that. There's a couple of videos on his uh, social media. I guess we'll share them so people can watch them and check it out. But yeah, he's doing a Kickstarter, so it's not like backed by any network or anything. He's just, I don't know if he's trying to do it independent or what. The only spin I would be interested in if Michael came back and like went to another office, another state. That that would be the only thing I'd be interested in. I don't think. Yeah, Stanley's not. He's not. Inter- he's not interested enough as a character for me to want to tune in. Yeah. What about? I told- what about uh, Dwight and Angela? I mean, now, Frank, you you now know that they're married. Dwight is over the Scranton branch for Dunder Mifflin. I mean, is, is that a spinoff that you guys would watch? Or would you rather see a reboot with the original cast? You know, no, they're all there. Definitely a reboot. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a Jim and Pam thing in Austin. And, like, Jim working on his sports stuff and maybe... Uh, I don't know, like cameos from different characters and that can show up too. Because because uh, Daryl would be there too. Yeah, doesn't wouldn't Daryl like work for the same company? Like that that could be a cool show. I, if it was all three of them, then I think that would be. I'd watch that. I'll watch that too. Mm-hmm. But yeah. when the show ended, there were a new group of young office workers. So you had Dakota Johnson who was in there, you had Plop, you had, uh, that's not his real name by the way. Um, and then uh, I can't remember the other one, but we had some you know, new characters that were in there. And Justin, did you say that maybe that there had been talk about you know, doing the office again, but starting off with those characters or? No, what I'd read is that there were like two ideas. They they thought about like bringing back the old cast, which is what NBC did with uh, Will and Grace. They brought that show back for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. I would prefer that. I'd prefer the old cast to come back and just like continue it or whatever, put it back together. But there's another idea where they would just do an office reboot where you would have, it would be the office idea, but just in a different city with a different cast, which, you know, that could definitely work also, but. I think you do need some of those characters to, you know, to make it work. But you know, I, I'm I'd watch either one of them honestly. Like I, I'm all for it. Let you me know? uh, let me interject. I got I got a question for you guys. I'm gonna try and display my cam. I've been messing with it blindly, so I don't know how this is gonna look. But hey, hey, I did fix it apparently completely blindly. Excellent. Well, anyway. Um, Frank, you brought up an interesting point a few minutes ago about uh, a specific scene when he's out there trying to get people to work uh, and there's a bunch of Hispanic people that he won't trust or whatever and then there's the one white guy. Well, uh, something that, uh, and this is on a less funny, more serious note, um, rebooting a show like The Office, which was in its time, it, it took some risks like you were just talking about. Can... Can a show nowadays in today's um, environment, social environment, can it take those risks, even even for comedy? I've heard our arguments on both sides of that, that comedy shouldn't have limits because it is parody of life. But others on the other side say, no, you can't do that. And at what point do you cross that line? So, so if they were to reboot a show like The Office, which had a lot of risque moments. Do you think they could they could uh, toe that line? Do you think they could be as funny as they used to be? This goes I out to everybody. So. I yeah, you hear I your think thoughts. So, simply because the office has such a huge cult following. So no matter no matter what 
is being conveyed in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the show, people are going to watch. Now, will people, will people complain who are not co-followers of the show? Probably so. But I think with comedies like that, um, that are so risque, like shows like South Park and shows like The Boondocks, they live, on, they live on being risque. But because the co-following is so strong, those, those groups of people who watch the show are not going to care. They're going to watch it regardless. People are going to pick it white picket fence. They're going to they're going to protest. But as long as the, the code following is strong, the ratings are high, it's not going to go anywhere. Well, yeah. as counterpoint to that, uh, there's a sh- they're talking about doing a reboot of a show. You may not recall this. You're, you're a bit younger. But uh, in the 90s, Kids in the Hall. Uh, some of you might recall this show. Um, yeah. And they're talking about doing a reboot of that. And that question was actually posed to them because this was in the last couple months. They were like, isn't this uh, – how do you guys feel? Do you think you're going to have an issue in the more politically correct environment of today trying to use your brand of humor? Um, so I know this is a concern. And then on, on – no, that, that wouldn't be a good example. I was going to make an example of uh, not, not House of Cards but one like that. But that was actually I think around sexual allegations. But I think there was a show that around someone's political affiliations uh, – which ended up resulting in them canning the show because the person was highly unpopular, politically speaking. Uh, I can't remember what the show was, and I, I could be off base. Um, but in this current uh, current environment of, of what is okay and what is not, and, and these extremes have become this way, and I'm just going to say it, because the POTUS we've had for the last three and a half years um, has kind of, pushed everyone into this extreme of uh, political correctness as a refutal to his absolute disregard for being correct. Um, Sorry going political on you guys, but I do wonder how that's going to affect our programming in the coming years, aside from the pandemic, which may affect our programming. We'll only get animation for the next year or two. Um, So just just want you guys' thoughts on that. Um, And also on the idea of would you watch shows... I just segued there uh, that are animated where normally you wouldn't considering that people necessarily being able to record live is becoming more difficult. I watch animated shows all the time, like Rick and Morty, Boondocks, like all those shows. And that's, I think those shows like that are risky and they, they push the boundaries to stuff. Like some of the stuff is pretty messed up that they say, like, it's pretty bad. But like shows like The Office and stuff like that, I think they can get away with more of this stuff because it's, it's 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 not as bad. They're not saying terrible things like they do on some of these other shows. But like that's the point. Like it's comedy. Like they're poking fun at issues, and sometimes they'll relate it back to the actual issues that are happening, and sometimes they they don't. And that's just how TV is and how comedy is sometimes. And yeah, I think it's definitely going to change, though, like, with everything that's happening now, like, just political correctness, like, everybody's, like, scared to say, like, something that might offend someone else, and you just got to be careful with what you say now. You you brought up a really interesting point, though, about, because now thinking about it, I, I think we're more forgiving, which is kind of weird since growing up you'd think cartoons are for kids, but I think we're more forgiving in animated shows, when you look at things like The Simpsons, Family Guy, uh, Boondocks, and, and all these others, I think they're more forgiving in what you can get away with in, than, or in South Park as well, and than what you can do in, in real life or with live actors, which is interesting. Is that is that because we have a layer of filter? It's like it's it's less real because they're cartoons, so the platform's more open to being incorrect or whatever, not. That's, I think that's exactly why. I think also if you had a show, yeah. Sorry, Dick. Go. Uh, go ahead and finish what you're saying. No, if you have a show like that, imagine having like a real life South Park. Like, there's no, there's no way that show would exist. Right, and I think like um, Nathan, the shows you were mentioning, the cartoons you mentioned, they're more geared toward adults anyway. You know, like South Park is not really for kids. I mean, Family Guy's on Fox. I'm sure a lot of kids watch it. Um, but it's, you know, the content for that's probably not really for kids. You know, like it's, it's kind of different. Um, I mean, car- cartoons have changed a lot over the past, you know, or animated shows, whatever you want to call them. They've changed a lot the last probably 15, 20 years. All, all thanks to the Simpsons. 
Right. I mean, The Simpsons was, you know, definitely, well, you know, was kind of geared toward kids, but the, you know, the actual commentary and stuff really was for adults. You know, they they predict a lot of stuff that's happened in the future, you know, later on that happened. Um, but something I wanted to talk about a second, you mentioned about like shows facing like, backlash. I mean, The Office has faced it recently also. They had to remove, was it an episode or just a scene they had to remove? It's, it was it's a, a scene. scene from one of the holiday episodes where Dwight was talking about, um, I don't know, it's like a different version of St. You know, St. Nicholas. Oh, like a, Germ- a German right. yeah. or something like that. Right. And so the same off, uh, the one of the warehouse workers who actually was the guy I think Dwight picked up in the other episode that um, y'all were talking about, um, he, it, there's a shot of him in the warehouse and he's, you know, basically black faced. Right. In the German lore, uh, this, you know, whatever it's called, uh, he had like a little sidekick and he, you know, right. like I said, happy to be blackface. So because of what's going on in today's world, um, that scene had to be removed from that episode um, on Comedy Central, on, you know, wherever it's being, uh, wherever it lives at this point. But I mean, The Office isn't the only one that it's happened to. Um, HBO Max, uh, live, uh, their streaming service that just launched not that long ago, they actually took down Gone with the Wind um, for a period of time because of all the backlash that went on um, for that film, even though, um, uh, I can't think of her name, uh, McDaniel, Hannah McDaniel, yeah. won an Oscar for her performance in, in Gone with the Wind. So, I mean, people these days are are, are really, you know, minding their P's and Q's. Um, but I think in years to come, we're going to start seeing a different, a different take on comedy, even though comedy does push the envelope uh, and not just, you know, scripted comedy. You'll see that even with, I think, stand up. I think stand up comedy is also going to take a hit, you know, yeah. with certain things. Well, I mean, stand up um, comedy is under fire right now, especially a lot of L.A. comics. And I mean, it's unfortunate, but like my favorite comedian is probably canceled. Chris D'Elia after what happened with him about a month ago um, when stuff came out about him. And there's been other stuff that's came out that's kind of defended him a little bit, but I think that more so than the content, I think that like the people involved with making shows and comedians and stuff, they have to be more careful, not so much when they're doing their craft, but when they're just being a regular person, you know, cause it seems like people get in the most trouble when they're tweeting about something or commenting about some, that's when they get the most backlash. It's not so much for what's in the show. I mean, granted, there are things in shows that, you know, get people charged up for different reasons, but I think it's more about, um, you know, these people just in their everyday lives. And, you know, the thing about social media is like, we, you know, we want to be more engaged and connected with people, but the more connected you are to people, the more you learn about people. And, you know, people aren't all awesome. Not everyone's the greatest person ever. And so, um, that's something that we're all, we've all, I mean, some of us already knew that, but other people are learning that. And, you know, there's a market for, for media companies to find stuff that's salacious from people. And I mean, even like people going into people's tweets from 10 years ago and like finding offensive tweets and bringing them back and saying, Oh, this person said this when they were like, you know, 10 years ago, when they were a kid or, you know, like with James Gunn for the director for guardians of the galaxy, you know, like he, he lost, Guardians three for for a little bit of time because someone went back in his Twitter and found some stupid comments he made and they made a big deal about it you know that were made ten years ago. Um, now he's been he's since been reinstalled back in, in charge of that movie, but I think people just have to be more careful on social media. And it's really not so much about what you do on your show; it's what, how you live your life, and I think you have to be more careful in that way. You know what, Justin, to, to pick it back up your point, like, not just in entertainment, but even, like, in sports, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I know, I think, um, what's the, Josh Allen, he had, he was, like, 13, he made a, he made a comment, a, it was yeah. racially sensitive, but he was 13, like, if I got here to what I said at 13, 14, 15 years old, I, I probably got fired from HCC, like, I mean, I think a lot of it's, like, evolving and, and learning and, and maturing, and I'm, I can't... You know, it's hard to hold somebody, you know, to a to a mature standard as a 13 to 14 year old kid and yeah. throw it back in their face 15 years later and saying, oh, look, 
look at you, you, you're ignorant. You're, I mean, yeah, you're a teenager. You're supposed to be ignorant. That, that's how you learn. You know what I'm saying? So I think, I mean, there's a fine line um, in, in being responsible with what you say, but I mean, a lot of it too is just maturing and growing. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, social media doesn't really allow for that. You know, it's, 140, 280 characters or whatever Twitter is and these other platforms. I mean, I'm not excusing anything that people say. People say some dumb stuff that I would never say. Even when I was a kid, I, I would know well enough, like, I shouldn't put this out there. Like, this is just dumb. But I do think that people can grow and people can learn. But we're in a weird, like, cancel society where people, it's like, I, I mean, I, some, somewhat I understand it because, like, there's not a lot of justice maybe in the world. Like, you know, and so people take their justice on social media, but you know, sometimes that's not real justice either. Like, you know, you can pull up stuff about people, but you know, someone should have a right to defend themselves and, you know, with computers and the internet and everything, like people can make things look how they want it to look. And it's not necessarily the truth. So I just, I would just say, be careful with what you post on social media. So. Oh yeah, that's, that's absolutely true because as we've learned with, you know, the internet as, it's uh, progressed in these last, you know, 30 years that everything lives on the internet. You, you try to delete it. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's going to be found one way or another. And um, I, I agree with what you're saying, Justin, about people who, you know, work on these shows, uh, but also have to mind what they do and say in the real world. Um, I think a lot of entertainers are also looking at what's going on in the world. Uh, I can't think of his name, but he's on Family Guy and he's the voice actor for um, one of the, and I don't watch Family Guy, so I don't know anyone's name, but the the black guy that's on uh, Family Guy, he's a, he's a white voice actor who voices for a black guy. And so he said, I'm no longer going to, you know, voice for this character because it, you know, it should be, I don't know what word he used, more authentic, real, I don't know. But, uh, you know, so certain, even entertainers are taking a stance and by not taking jobs, you know, like that, that might question where they stand socially or politically on certain matters. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, the office. <laughs> 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 No, but this is this has been a good discussion about this stuff because this is what's been going on, especially in entertainment lately. Um, I mean, in the world, obviously too. And entertainment stuff is not nearly as important. What's going on in you know, other places in the world? But um, but but I didn't get an answer to the the second question I posed, except to from from George. Would you watch? Let's say, let's say the next episode uh, or the next. We know the boys will be live action because that's getting ready to come out in the fall. Woot. Um, but I don't know. P- pick a show you love that, you know, Mandalorian. Suddenly the next Mandalorian, it's all animated. Or um, this new Game of Thrones they're doing. It's now animated suddenly. Uh, how would you feel about watching that? I know in the past, uh, Brittany, you said you're not a fan of, of anime or animated shows per se. I mean, would... Do you think that might change if you were um, dealing with um, a world where you've got to go a year without this is a possibility? I mean, it's it's not the end of the world for me. So, so I do like animation. Don't get me wrong. I've actually been binge watching a bunch of like Disney, old school Disney movies on Disney Plus right now. Um, I was telling Justin not that long ago that the one anime that I really do like and I finished binge watching it on Hulu was Sailor Moon. None of y'all judge me. Um, but I mean, if it's not my first choice, let's put it that way. But in the sense of, let's say, Mandalorian due to, you know, COVID concerns, what have you, they had to move that into an animation Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'd watch it. I'd, I'd absolutely watch it. I mean, that. That's not going to stop me, you know, one way or another. The only animation I will not watch that's already based off a movie is the Clone Wars uh, animation because I can't stand episode two as it is. So I'm not going to watch the animation at all. I know it gives a lot more information about what went on during that time, but I refuse to watch it. 
What about you, Frank? Well, I'm kind of just, I kind of got blindsided. I didn't know, so they're, so they're changing the Game of Thrones Fire and Blood series to animation? No, no. no. He's, uh, he's saying, like, what if they did? He's not saying they're oh, doing that. Oh, um, it would depend what's on. Like, I mean, if, if I had nothing else going on as far as, like, watching other shows, then, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a chance. Um, I just, I'm just, I don't want anything watered down. I don't want people, I don't want show show gunners and producers to be like, oh man, man, we can't we can't do X, Y, and Z because of the climate, so let's water down the product. That, that's that's my fear. So, um, but initially, depending on what's going on, I, I would give it a shot just to see how you know how good or bad it is. And that Justin, leaves you, Justin. I um, so like animation, it's just. It's not that I don't like it. It's just so hard for me to get into it for a series. But um, I think I, I think I'd almost have to. Like if I really like, I mean, the Mandalorian, the first season, that I mean, it was okay. Like it wasn't that great, but it wasn't it wasn't bad. I think that would be fine. I mean, in some cases, stuff might be better animated. Like like you know the DC like movie universe. Um, I think that would be better if it was animated than by having live action people because. I've seen some of their animated movies and the stories are better than, I mean, way better than their movies. Their live action movies are for the most part really bad. So, you know, it, it might work out better in some cases. Um, Game of Thrones, I don't think I would like that. I don't think I would really get into I mean, if, if that's all I had, then yeah, I'd watch it because we probably want to talk about it on the show. So I would watch it for the show. But like, I don't think I'd be excited to watch it. You know, like I don't, yeah, and I think that the, the only animated thing that, I, that I've seen that I've really been blown away by was the Spider-Verse, uh, Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse. That was like an amazing movie. Like it's one of the better superhero movies of all of them. It's the best Spider-Man probably. And that was animated. But I mean, it's like a different level of animation. It's kind of like, I don't think you could expect a TV show to have that kind of quality or, or even like DC to be able to produce well, that. I think you could from something like Game of Thrones. From HBO, yeah, maybe, maybe so. Yeah, I mean, if, if that were the case, I'd totally watch it because, I mean, that might be a drawing point to get people to come back to the show because, yeah, you, know, you don't have to get any kind of physical shape. You just have to be able to do voiceover work. And I think that, I think that's actually like, I think that that's what Star Wars should do because, like, like what I think Star Wars should do because people don't like the new Star Wars movies because they were really bad. And I almost said a, a bad word to describe him. Um, <laughs> stuff, I really wanted to. Um, I think that it'd be funny or it'd be better if they just continued the story of what happened in Return of the Jedi and did it with an animation. And then you could have all these people come back and do the voiceover stuff. You know, the people that are still alive, obviously. They could do their voiceover work and they could continue those stories because, you know, we saw what Disney did with those movies. And not good. I mean... Mm. Have you even seen The Rise of Skywalker yet? Nope. I regret to inform you that, yes, yes, during the quarantine, I got so desperate for content that I subjected myself to two hours of that misery. So so what, okay, I've been dying to talk to you about this. Was it as bad as, like, what Brittany and I said? Or was it worse? Let's be honest. It was worse. Okay. It was really bad. Um, I don't even want to, like, I've, I've spent the last like two months purging it from my memory. Um, so I, I couldn't even discuss details because I just, I literally, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't. I think, I think I ended up like probably on my phone while the thing was going on. Just like, yeah, yeah, this, oh, no. So yeah, it's, it was, um, oh, it's bad. Just the whole Skywalker thing at the end. Just, it's even worse when you see it. Yeah. What's your name, Brittany? Wait. Say your name. Say your name. I'm Brittany. Your last name. It's on the Skywalker. screen. Skywalker. We know. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh. I think you probably remember. Like we talked about this movie before it came out in December, and I told you I said I had, I had two concerns. I was like. How are they going to wrap up this story? And will they make the title of the movie, which is The Rise of Skywalker, will they make that make sense? 
and they were a huge over two on both. I mean, just two big swings and misses. Like, you know, it's like Bugs Bunny striking out in the cartoons where he would swing once, I'd swing once and then strike out three times or whatever. Like, it was just so bad. And yeah, I'm glad you saw the movie, but. Because you, uh, Misery Loves Company? Yeah, well, I mean, I wanted to talk about this movie back in December because this movie was like, I mean. And now we don't want to talk about it at all. At all. I still could talk about it because there's there's so many bad things in the movie, like comically bad, like not understanding what the characters are about, bad stuff. So, but I think if they did an animated version of some other kind, like one of the stories that existed before these movies, you know, like the books and stuff that were written in the nineties, if they did an animated version of that stuff, that would be awesome, and I think I would want to see that. Yeah, because if they ever did, if they ever did *Heir to the Empire*, the Timothy Zahn series, that trilogy, yeah. That's uh, really I know cool. it's not canon anymore. But if they ever did that animated, I would, I would just watch that all day long. That would be really cool. Yeah. So, so uh, one other thing I want to ask you guys, um, I know, I know Justin's trying to probably end it here, and I'm like, nope, not going to let it happen yet. Uh, one, one last thing, at least for me. Um, Life, or, 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 or fiction imitates reality, so our shows imitate reality in some form or other. So everybody's lives for the past, what, three months have been like this right here. So I, I think I've heard already talk of a show coming out or already out that's kind of like this. Do you expect a lot more content that might come out that's created with this kind of world in mind? It's talk definitely going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. I mean, this is such a huge deal, like event, like this n never happened like in our lifetime. So there's definitely something that that it's going to be talked about for a while. Now, I'm, now, do you expect programming to come out that's based around this oh, yeah. format? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, there's okay. going to be shows about this. There is definitely going to be mentioned. I wouldn't surprise. Well, I don't be surprised if there's like a quarantine series or like something that I don't know. Someone makes a show about it. Hey, 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 just heads up. Quarantine Cuisine. It's coming. <laughs> Is that your show? It's. It was a joke I made on social media the other day, but I wouldn't be surprised if a show like that comes along. That's a good title. Yeah, I, I think we're definitely going to start seeing a lot more content that's shot you know, at home. Um, it might not be as refined, but just so that there's some kind of content you know, coming out of there. I mean, look what John Krasinski did. Uh, with the, you know, what was called uh, Some Good News or something like that. Um, he did that for a little while and it got, you know, a huge following. Um, I, I really like the fact that because of what's going on uh, in, during this time that our 2020 high school graduates, you know, didn't get to experience prom or maybe have their own actual high school commencement. And so uh, John Krasinski with the power that he you know, possesses got a whole bunch of other celebrities to throw like a virtual prom for 2020 high school graduates. And I thought that was really cool, you know, doing stuff like that from the, you know, confinements of your own home. Um, this is probably how we're going to, you know, be for the next year, year and a half, you know, just concerts are going to be all virtual. You'll probably have to pay like a small fee in order to, um, you know, watch it or something. Um, it's going to be an interesting world. Have y'all paid for any movies? Like uh, like theater movies? That That's that's a hard no. <laughs> I refuse to. So I, I, I paid to watch that uh, Pete Davidson movie like uh, last month. Uh, I think the King of Staten Island or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That movie was, it was pretty funny. I've never paid for a movie before, but I paid 20 bucks. Like if we were going to a movie theater, but it was hilarious. Is it? Is it like a one-time thing or do you own it after that? No, it's like a, it's like you're renting it for like two to two days, like two to three days. Yeah, because it came out about a month ago. Like I, I want to see the movie, but I'm, I'll wait until it's, you know, either on like Amazon Prime or Netflix or. Yeah. There's a point where like there's like a maybe a month or two, three later after after it's released where like it'll be on demand for like five bucks and you can rent it that way. So yeah. 
I might do that, but um, there there really hasn't been anything that like that made me want to do that. Like I think like if if Black Widow was on demand like that, I'd I'd pay to watch that. But there's yeah. I don't know there hasn't been anything yet that's like jumped out at me that's maybe want to. Yeah. Yeah. My, myself, what I've been watching, like I watch almost exclusively YouTube content now. Like I'll watch the occasional movie or I might binge watch a show, but I'd say about 90% of what I'm watching now is, is YouTube content. Nice. I think uh, Justin was doing the same. He was telling me about a Star Wars rabbit hole that he's gone down and uh, something about Justin, tell them about the audio uh, or the radio, radio, uh, whatever it was called. Radio yeah, show, so podcast I, kind of thing? No, so I, um, I guess, for whatever reason, I was looking for, like, I, 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 every day, like, I walk about four or five miles just whenever I get a chance after work or whatever. And I always listen to, you know, podcasts or whatever. And I was trying to find something different. And I found this, uh, this, like, radio drama play of, like, the original Star Wars. It was from... It was on. It was on NPR back in like nineteen. Yeah, I've, I've I've heard it. It's from a yeah. while ago, the nineties, I think. No, it well, it came out eighty one. Original. It's older than I thought. Well, yeah. I, I listened to it in the nineties. I thought it was new then. Yeah, it was like released on on DVD uh, on CD, but like re release. But uh, anyway, the quality of it's amazing. Like it sounds like it's got all the music from Star Wars. It even has Mark Hamill playing Luke Skywalker, and so. I don't know. It's really cool. And then I found there's a bunch of other like radio dramas. And there's like Marvel ones and there's like a Wolverine on a Fantastic Four. And there's a lot of cool stuff out there if you go look at it. Right? Then I found out that on YouTube that some people have taken these audio files and matched them up with like comic books about the same stuff and almost made like little movies. And they're they're kind of hard to watch, but it's, it's also kind of cool. So there's a bunch of Star Wars stuff like that. And then I also found this thing that's I think is really cool. I should have shared with y'all. Um, there's this guy who like cuts like current trailers of old movies, and they did like a he did, he did like a 2020 version of Empire Strikes Back. Nathan would like hmm. that. I, yeah, Justin showed me one of them, and I think it was Empire. Empire was really really good. Like, and as much as I hate to admit it, that's the one I've seen the least. Um, but the way that the trailer was cut. It it made it seem like it was a whole like new type movie and very like today. Yeah, you know? it looked like a current movie, and it's like yeah. pretty crazy how they're able to do that with you know with a movie that was made in nineteen eighty or whatever. So really hmm. cool. Really, years. really cool. Yeah. See, so, yeah, I've been watching that stuff. I've been you know just kind of watching some stuff on Netflix here and there. Um, but yeah, kind of waiting on the boys and that. The yeah. show's obviously waiting on that, too, because we'll definitely, you know, just a program we know for anybody watching. Um, the Y'all watch the trailer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks for watch sharing the first that. first three uh, minutes. Link. Yeah. Yeah, so we have the trailer for Boys Season 2 down below on our feed. Um, I'm so excited for it. It looks like it's going to be hella crazy, a lot bloodier maybe than it season one was um i don't know frank i'm gonna pick on you for a little bit what are you looking for with the boys i want to i want to i want to know how i want to see more about homelander's family the secret mm-hmm. family that, that we found out in the season finale and i want to know how old buddy's gonna get that, get that situation um kieran the main character butch, butch. butch yeah yeah I'm gonna, yeah, Butcher, yeah. Uh, I want to see how he's going to get out of that situation and how cause they, they're so intertwined now with, with his wife being alive. And so I, I want to see what comes out of that for sure. There's a new, uh, there's a new uh, member of the Seven now too. Um, yeah. So we'll see what she's all about and how she fits in. So. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see. I mean, it looks like she's got almost like like storm, like lightning powers and stuff, and can fly. It looks mm-hmm. very cool. I yep. think the comics that character was actually uh, a guy. Yeah, it was a man. Yeah, uh, the character is like from Great Britain or something. It's a it's like their version of Superman. So, mm-hmm. but 
yeah, it looks it looks really good. I'm looking forward to it. The show starts on September 4th, so we'll, we're going to be back to do that show every week. Um, in the meantime, uh, we have some open space, so we could, you know, we hopefully we'll do some more shows, like something. I don't know. Maybe we can kick around some ideas. Um, we will. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I've got some ideas all in this book. Yeah. So definitely uh, just. Is that your dream books. journal or something? I mean, what? It's my Watchers in the Basement journal. Don't judge me. <laughs> okay. um, no, I think it'd be kind of fun to talk about like movies or whatever that came out of the 80s that we really like, um, cult classics, um, do like a rewatchables, like we re- rewatch. Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. Well, y'all need to watch Harry Potter. Um, I've seen them all. Okay, well, good. You, you're invited, Justin. I kind of watched him. Um, I'm, on, I'm on the third one. Okay, I'm proud of you, George. I'm proud of you, Frank. Yeah. We need to get you on the uh, on the bandwagon that is a uh, Harry Potter. I know you you're going to take off in a second, but that's you know the kind of content I think we should you know think about right now. Just while we're in quarantine for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, so if any of you out there who are watching us, we appreciate you watching our little podcast for today. Um, if you want us to talk about anything that you like, let us know down below in the comments. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also send us a message on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, yeah, I think that pro- probably wraps it up because Frank like took off. <laughs> He's going, going, gone. Frank is gone. Yeah. Yeah. So for Frank and for Brittany and George and Nathan, this is Justin. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. Be safe. Bye, guys. Mm-hmm.